So good afternoon. Thanks so much for joining us today for how to become Westchester Green Business Certified. I just want to remind everyone that you're on mute, so to control, that's to control the unwanted background noise. If you would like to speak or ask us a question at any time during the webinar, please let us know through the questions box on the right. We'll answer any questions as we go along, or at the end, we'll, we're going to do a Q&A. Today's webinar is being recorded, and it will be made available to you after the session. So thank you again for joining us today. And my name is Danny Glazer. I'm the CEO of Green Team Spirit and one of the founders and program directors for the Westchester Green Business Challenge and certified programs. I'm joined today by my colleagues, Scott Fernquist and Jana Petrikova. Scott works for Westchester County and is a co-founder and program director of the WGBC. Yana works with me at Green Team Spirit, and she is the WGBC program manager and author of the Green Team Spirit Greenhouse Gas Emissions Performance Tools that will be used that are used for certification. And interesting, a little bit about the people who are on this call today. Um, today's webinar attendees represent diverse industries, including nonprofits restaurants, hotels, hospitals, biomedical, real estate, libraries, technology, banks, pest management, marketing, and more. And your company sizes range from 1 to 1,000. This is reflective of the organizations that are currently in the program and the Westchester business community at large. So I'm starting with a little background about the Westchester Green Business Challenge, because the Westchester Green Business Challenge was created in 2009, and the Westchester Green Business Certified Program was not created until, or was not launched until January of 2014. So the challenge is a program that, um, it's a web-based program, and it's also a program that has um, many events and activities associated with it. <clears throat> it was designed for all companies in the county to help them to, you know, quote unquote, go green. It's a public-private partnership between Westchester County Government and the Business Council of Westchester. So there are currently 285 companies that are registered with the challenge. And what that means is that these companies have gone online and they have um, downloaded an interactive scorecard and have assessed their companies in six key areas, which we'll get into later, but you know, energy, waste, water, <clears throat> and those kinds of of, um, of areas. And again, ed education networking, we have been have it holding educational events around key topics for many years, and um, the attendance has really been quite high over, over the past several years. So the challenge is a free program designed to help companies save money, improve the environment, and we have been helping companies promote their success in this area for years as we are going to embark on our fifth annual recognition event. So the three program partners are the Business Council of Westchester, Westchester County Government, and Green Team Spirit. We currently have wonderful sponsors, a dozen wonderful sponsors. Con Edison has been a platinum sponsor from the very beginning. Um, our gold sponsors are Verizon and the Westchester Community Foundation, and Rexon is a silver sponsor. We, are, we now have eight bronze sponsors, uh, Diamond Properties, C.W. Brown, New York Presbyterian Hospital, the Blue Book Network, Perno Ricard, Regeneron, Allied Converters, and Atlantic Westchester. And um, really wonderful to note that nine of the 12 sponsors that you see on this page are actually in the certification program. So the mission of Westchester Green Business Certified is to help Westchester-based companies develop and implement a formal program for environmental sustainability that delivers value and measurable results. So what is the program? So as I mentioned earlier, um, it's an expansion of the Westchester Green Business Challenge, and it was developed for companies 
that were ready to take their environmental stewardship to the next level. I mean, interestingly, there were so many companies in the program that um, were so successful in this area. So it gave them an opportunity to showcase the work that they have been doing, as well as fill in some of the gaps um, that they think that they were not doing. And, but really to shine as leaders, um, business leaders in the county um, for their work. So they, they're really doing quite well in this area. We very much appreciate the members of our program. So the key benefits are that an organization will get step-by-step -step professional guideline, guidance on how to incorporate sustainable business practices at the organizational level. We know that your companies are busy doing your own core work and that um, sustainability is not necessarily something that um, you specialize in. So what we're offering is the opportunity to use tools, um, training, networking with peers, sharing of best practices, um, promoting success, you know, giving you customized assistance, and quite a bit of recognition. So it's, it's a very um, turnkey program with very specific steps, and in the end, um, we hope that you become certified through the program. So we're very proud of our members. I'm not going to read them all. You can look at them. But the members that are in bold and with the asterisk are all, all currently received Westchester Green Business Certification. So they are certified. But you can see it's an incredible mix of companies, small to large, um, nonprofits to hospitals and hotels and colleges. So we're very proud of this list. So these are the companies that have been certified to date. Um, Montefiore was just informed this morning of their certification, so they were thrilled about that. And our members, um, here are just some quotes, and <clears throat> we're going to send this to you, but um, from Jim Diamond from Diamond Properties, uh, they were the first company to be certified through the program. And uh, they had a great experience, and they have continued to work with us on so many levels. Um, we have Dr. Philip Wilner from New York Presbyterian Hospital um, really giving us a very high compliment as you know, the value that they put on sustainability um, for their organization and patient care. And then Lisa Moyer, who owns the Blue Pig Ice Cream Store, and if you've never been there, you need to go. It's in Croton, and um, she's really made so many changes to her and her process because of our program. Okay, so here are the steps to certification. The first is submit uh, to submit a, uh, a contract. It's an it's a membership terms agreement and payment form. Um, you'll provide some information and agree to the terms. The second is to complete the application and checklist. Um, this is a 60-page document, but it's um, you know, it's online, and really the reason that it is such a long document is because we provide so much information and resources embedded in the document for you to be able to be successful in achieving the strategies that are recommended. And the document is broken up to these sections, organizational commitment, energy, materials management, waste and recycling, materials management, purchasing, transportation, land use, and water. We ask you to distribute an employee survey to your staff and as well as an employee commuting survey which will be used to track your greenhouse gas emissions. We ask you to complete the greenhouse gas emissions inventory, uh, prepare and deliver a final presentation which for the most part our companies have been doing a PowerPoint and they can all be found on our website. Uh, we do a final verification and review of what you have submitted to us, and then your organization will get certified. So just breaking this down, um, step one, um, what you need to do is fill out the membership form, and you'll, you'd have to follow these minimum requirements. I know that everybody who signed up for this call um, met these requirements, but um, it's commercial space, no home-based businesses. You have to have at least one employee 
and access to energy consumption and billing data, and then, but we do have tenants who did not have direct access to their billing data because they were not sub-meter, but they were able to work with their landlord to prorate this data. Um, oops, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Let me go back, because here's the pricing. Um, so it's, these are the price points to, for the first year to go through the certification process. Um, just so you know, we, members who, which we would love everybody to stay in the program, um, the cost for remaining in the program after the first year is 50% of what you are looking at right now. And there's a 10% discount for nonprofit organizations. So the application checklist is the 60-page document that I referred to. Um, we, when we created this document, we combed and extensively researched all of the green business engagement programs around the country and feel that we put together a really great list. Um, I mentioned the, the categories, and I won't say those again, but each section includes policy, actions, and performance. So there are 90 required actions and 119 voluntary actions. And although actions are required, if you can absolutely not complete that action for a specific reason, then we ask you to just put the information and the reason why into the notes section of the application and checklist. So as I said, there are built-in links. This document is a working document, and um, we hold brown bag lunches regularly for you to, to do trainings on the various topics and for you to connect with your peers in person. So organizational commitment is probably the most important of all of the sections because um, there has to be buy-in from the top of the company. We ask that the company leader sign um, a, an environmental policy and distribute that policy to staff. And then there are steps within organizational commitment, such as designating a coordinator, starting a green team, incorporating um, sustainability into HR, um, landlord-tenant collaboration, and celebrating success. So the more that, the deeper the organizational commitment, the, the better that, um, the better chances that sustainability will really become just sort of commonplace in your organization. So we're going to give you some examples from our certified companies, Time and Properties. We took this from their um, um, presentation that you can find on our website. So they created a green team, and the green team consists of people from accounting and leasing, and the president is on the green team, and somebody from finance and property management, and they meet monthly. So, um, and I actually had the pleasure of going to their Tenant Appreciation Day, which was great. They had a green team table at their Tenant Appreciation Day. And what's really amazing for real estate people that are on the call is that, you know, property managers and real estate, I mean, it's just tenants and landlords working together, spreading the word together to do this work. Um, that's really going to make um, the business of sustainability go far fast. So we love that they work with their tenants. Energy. So again, energy management policy, which this is all in the application checklist with guidelines on how to set these policies. So it's nothing to worry about that you'll have to figure out um, without our help. But the sections, any energy section, the subsections include an energy audit, lighting, heating and cooling, appliances, and renewable energy. And again, is recording your uh, performance metrics in the GHG emissions tool is something that we will guide you through. So sustainable energy strategies at the Hendrick Hudson Free Library, they were fabulous. They went and got themselves um, some, a Con Ed grant and some nice sort of funding and were able to employ a lot of these um, changes at their, oh, I don't know why that's doing that. Um, at their library. So it's really very exciting. They've done so much work, and you can look at their complete um, presentation online. And they're also influencing the other libraries in the Westchester library system to follow suit. And I know that there are representatives from the Harrison Library on the call today. 
Uh, materials management, waste, and recycling. So there are 39 actions, 18 are required, and the subsections are waste audit, general reuse and recycling, including electronics, um, paper and office supplies, kitchen, and meetings and small events. And the blue pig was our highlight for this. Um, this little sign can be found at the Blue Pig that they just let it be known um, that they are trying to minimize the, the waste and minimize um, use of materials. And so they put this sign up and now you can go into the Blue Pig and take a regular spoon or fork at, instead of a, a plastic spoon. It's a small gesture, but something that's really important. Um, and also, the, by doing things like that, the Blue Pig is educating every single person who walks into the ice cream store about the importance of that. Um, so as far as purchasing goes, we ask that you set a, purchase, a green purchasing policy and, related, and then there are actions related to centralized purchasing, stationary office supplies, food, beverage, catering, cleaning products, electronics, packaging, and low VOC and non-toxic products. And what's becoming interesting to us is that as our companies are getting certified and submitting their final reports, you know, we can see that um, what companies are now using, for example, for green cleaning products. And it'd be great to be able to share that information across companies if you're looking to make that kind of a switch. Um, for sustainable purchasing, our example is Metropool. So this is a slide from their presentation. And um, interestingly about them is they also are encouraging their vendors, contractors, and suppliers to um, meet the standards of environmental performance that a Metropool now does. And, um, and they've shared with us some of the products that they are purchasing. They switched to 50% recycled paper and switched their paper and cleaning products. Transportation. <clears throat> 27 actions here, 10 are required, and the three categories are employee commuting, business travel, and fleet. The Crown Plaza is our example for transportation. They have a shuttle service to the airport, train station and corporate offices for their guests. They've got um, charging stations for electric cars, bike racks, and they encourage carpooling, bicycling, and walking to their employees. Land use, 13 required actions. Um, this is related to removing toxins, stormwater management, irrigation, planting, leaf grass recycling, and integrated pest management. Um, I know that we have a pest management company on the, on the phone as well today, as well, well as um, CSA, Community Supported Agriculture. We know that land use does not apply to everybody because for tenants, but something very good to be aware of and to bring up to your landlord in case you can have any influence in any of this. Um, C.W. Brown owns their building and they're fortunate enough to be able to have this compost bin outside and um, they have actually a little garden and um, you know they're very conscious of and these are the items that they put into their presentation of the kinds of things that they're doing related to land use. Water. There are nine required actions related to water audit, water fixtures, washrooms, kitchens, cleaning, mechanical. And New York Presbyterian Hospital is our example here. So they have many water initiatives. They actually won an award from the Westchester Green Business um, Challenge program a few years ago about their work in this area but they installed um, low flow fixtures, they have signage throughout the hospital, um, they have a centralized filtered water dispensing system, and employees are very cognizant of leaks and they know that they need to report them. So the next step is to conduct an employee survey. So this is, we provide you with a survey monkey and um, with all the questions already prepared, and you just need to send, and we also give you language to send the survey with to encourage your staff to complete the survey. And this is such an important um, tool because it really highlights and allows staff to 
you know, to weigh in on how they feel about your organization in general, whether you're environmentally aware, and then really to get specific in the same categories we talked about before, energy, waste, and water, you know, how, or, you know are they recycling, and um, would they like to be on the green team? So inevitably, this is a great way to grow your green team. We always suggest that you don't pre-choose who's on the green team, that you let um, your staff raise their hand and self-identify. And you might be surprised as to who would be interested in helping out. This is an example that we just pulled from one of the surveys. You know, so it's an example about waste, and so that they can check off whether they reduce, reuse, or recycle, or compost any of these materials. Um, <clears throat> and here are examples of questions about transportation and commuting options. Uh, the greenhouse gas emissions inventory, I know it can sound scary, but it's a wonderful tool, and um, we provide step-by-step -step guidance on how to complete the tool. But um, the way that it's designed is you can put in some basic information about, um, you know, your number of employees, square footage, um, and take information from your, from your bills, and, the, and all of the formulas are already pre-populated. So beautiful charts and graphs um, will you know, help you to learn about the emissions um, use in your organization and ways to reduce emissions as well as ways to save money and reduce costs that are related to those. Um, and your, your report, the summary report will show uh, scope one, two, and three emissions. So this is an example of the cover sheet of the greenhouse gas emissions inventory. Um, so this is the kind of information that you would need to put in and where you might find it. I'm sorry, I'm going to go back. So, um, you know, the electricity is simply, energy is simply going to usage and costs from your energy bills. Transportation, you're asked to provide information related to <clears throat> business travel, if, that, if your company does participate in that fleet if you have one, and employee commuting. For waste, um, volume and cost of waste, and we also help you find out where to get, where to get the information. Um, water, volume and cost, refrigerants, which we could walk you through how to find that information, and help you with a purchasing inventory list. So broken down, it's really not, it's very difficult information to get, and it's the value of um, gathering this information is really very high. So the final steps are this final presentation of verification. So we take, you will send us your completed application and checklist. Um, you will send us your surveys. You will send us the greenhouse gas emissions tool. We will review everything. And then we've been hold, having phone calls with um, all of the organizations when they're very close to the end. And we review what you know the, the few things that might need to be added and any questions that we might have. And that's that's worked out really well. And then you get certified. So upon certification, we so companies have been, even though this is not, this is totally optional, but every company that has been certified has opted to have a celebration ceremony at their place of work. And these have been great because it's an opportunity for them to um, show staff and stakeholders, um, board members, you know, and tell the story of what they've done. And some have chosen to show their final presentation. But and then our our team puts together a newsletter, and we have been sending um, the story and photos to our list of 2,000, and the Business Council has been sending it to their list, and the county to their list, and so on. So um, it's really ended up being some wonderful recognition and publicity for the companies and organizations that are participating. And again, it really serves to help other and inspire other organizations to follow in your footsteps. So here are three photos from three of our celebrations. Um, one was at C.W. Brown, one was at New York Presbyterian, and one from the Hendrick Hudson Free Library. So um, our elected officials, representatives from the Business Council from Westchester County, 
um, and from um, and just some local elected officials have been showing up to these, and they're really gaining in popularity. This is a the certificate that this is the first one that was given to Diamond Property. So a framed certificate is provided to every organization that becomes certified. Uh, I saved the date. So we're having our fifth annual Westchester Green Business Challenge recognition event and awards ceremony on June 4th. It's hosted by the county executive and Dr. Marsha Gordon of the Business Council. Every year we give out a Charles W. Brown Jr. Sustainability Award um, last year, and it's really for a company that um, really very deeply Address. Well, you can, you can see the, uh, the photo of, of this beautiful award for visionary leadership and commitment to sustainability. So it's a very special award that we give out to a very deserving organization each year. And then we give out achievement awards to companies for the, you know, our categories, outreach, energy, waste, transportation, land use, and water. Um, so each year it's a fabulous celebration and um, we really hope that you can join us. Here's a picture, a few photos from last year. Uh, we have two event sponsors so far this year. We are definitely looking for more. We are very delighted that Fail Industries and Suburban Carding, both members of the WGB certified program, have, have chosen to sponsor the recognition event. So that's the wrap. Um, we hope that you are inspired to join us and join the Westchester Green Business Certified Program. We would be delighted and honored to work with each and every one of you. Um, we will send you this presentation after the webinar. You could go to these links to sign up, or um, you can certainly ask us you know, any questions that you might have um, in order to, so that you feel comfortable with signing up for the program. And now, Scott, will you unmute yourself so that we can answer some questions, if there are any? Sure, hi. Um, one question we got is, how long does it typically take to become certified? We didn't really get into that too much, just to give people an idea in terms of the uh, the duration of the program or how long it takes to become certified? I mean, it can take three months to over a year. It really depends upon your your organization, how, um, and, and if you just sit down and you really want to knock this thing off and sit down with the application checklist and feel as if your organization has already um, accomplished many of these measures and you can, you know, you can do it quickly. But, um, <clears throat> Many of our organizations, you know, have taken time to put some of these measures in place, and it has taken them, you know, some some over a year. So it's really the path and the process is completely up to you. Okay, great. One other question is, um, you mentioned trainings for members of the WGB Certified Program. Can you provide a little bit more information about what the trainings look like and what those are all about? Sure. So. We, in the past, we were doing training webinars, and we've actually switched over to live training events. So we, they're happening about every six weeks um, at the County Board of Elections building, which is near the, near the Westchester County Government building, in a conference room. And there have been about 20, 25 people who, from various companies, and it will, we'll have a topic that day. For example, we have a training coming up on May 12th. The topic is transportation. And so we'll go through the transportation section of the application and checklist. And then the second half of the training is really just companies and talking to each other, sharing best practices, and asking questions about anything or sharing stories about anything that, um, you know, that's you know, worth sharing or of interest to the group. So those sessions have been really wonderful. And um, it's been really our pleasure to see our companies um, collaborating with each other. And they last about an hour, hour and a half at most. OK, great. Um, 
Were there any other questions from the group? Um, just a reminder, if you do have a question, please enter it into the question box. And if you think of any questions after the webinar is over, we are, of course, happy to receive them. And our email address is on this slide here that we all get, which is westchestergbc at gmail.com. Okay, and, we'll, and again, we will. This this webinar was recorded, um, so we will be emailing everyone a copy um, of the slide deck and a link to the recording once we have it posted on our website. So, Danny, was yeah, there anything I else you wanted to add, or? Got I see one person. Did you answer the person about the home office? Yes, I did clarify okay. that with him already. Okay, thanks. <laughs> um, great. So we will be in touch with everybody after we'll send you the, the, the webinar and um, look forward to hearing from you. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Have a great day.